Uh, this is where you can schedule summarized reports to be sent to us by email. Now this type of report is enabled by default and it will be sent every day. And I'll show you later an example of a summary report once we generate a lot of traffic. Now you can also change the schedule period when the summary reports will be sent. It can be sent every week or maybe once a month. It all depends on your preferences. You can also specify other email addresses for other people who should also receive this report. When there is enough traffic and logs recorded, the FortiCloud portal will finally display some interesting data that we can view. Starting on the dashboard, we can view the amount of traffic coming in and out of the WAN facing interface on our firewall, shown right here in this widget. Right below that, you will see top traffic by protocol, where HTTP is the top application protocol that is used, including the top traffic by region showing where we are accessing networks inbound and outbound from our firewall. So these are the main widgets displayed here, but we can always remove any widget that we don't need or want and add something more specific that's important to us. Things like top viruses, top attacks, or maybe top DOP sources, among others, like top spam perhaps. So it all depends on how you want to customize your dashboard for what is important to view. Now let's go to the 40 view tab. Okay, and here we can view the top talkers based on the top destination IP that our users are accessing. Now the top destination here is an IP address. Okay, it has a lot of bandwidth usage, but this IP address belongs to Netflix. Now this is obviously not a business related application and it can actually be blocked from our firewall. Now let's go ahead and view the top sources from our network. So let's select source. Okay, and there you see that the top source is 10.67.78.36, which has also accumulated a lot of bandwidth. So this is likely the individual who is viewing Netflix from their device, probably their mobile device, like their iPad or something. We can even view the details of everything that the source has been doing by clicking on this entry right here. Let's do that. Okay, and let's go ahead and go to the destination tab. And this will show basically all the destinations that this user has accessed, which are likely websites. So this could be also very helpful. And of course you will see that the top talker, the top destination is the same address that we saw, which belongs to Netflix. So we know for sure that it is this user that is accessing Netflix specifically and using up a lot of bandwidth. Also here you can go to logs and uh, very quickly Wait for this to load up. We can view details of the services that um, they use, including any threats that has been detected. Let's go ahead and go to the next tab, which is drill down. Okay. And this default page shows things like top traffic from any IP. And you will see that once again, Netflix, that address is the top traffic address that we saw before. We can view other activity things like by clicking this option right up here, like top traffic that we can view um, by service, for example, let's go ahead and select that. Okay, and this will show that the top traffic services that has been used on the top here is HTTP in terms of inbound traffic, which is marked here in green. So this is um, all inbound traffic and Netflix streaming services, it reside over HTTP and that will appear as inbound traffic. So once again, this is how we can view those details um, very clearly. And of course we can view other top services coming in and out of our firewall. So very, very helpful. As I mentioned earlier, here is what the summary report looks like that will be sent by default every day by email unless you change it. So this will show things such as the top bandwidth and session usage that you can see right here in these tables. And there you will see our .36 host right here being a top talker. And of course you'll see other summary details that will be listed based on what security features you have enabled such as application or web filtering. So this report is attached to this email as a PDF that you can view to get more details. 
But again, this summary report is very simple and it keeps you informed about how your firewall is performing. It's really, really good. There are also some basic management capabilities that you can extend up to the Florida cloud, but I don't find those functions very useful at this time. So for example, when we go back to our Florida cloud portal page, okay, so for our device, it will say no management tunnel. This means that our firewall isn't enabled for that yet. So let's go back to our firewall. To enable this, let's go to the admin settings page. Okay, and here under central management, we'll go ahead and enable for the cloud and save our changes. Now keep in mind that doing this change won't change anything on the dashboard page. So once again, here under for the cloud, we will still see the same details. However, when we go back to the FortiCloud portal page, you will see that the message of no management tunnel is no longer there. But we see a few things that are different. We see an option here for launching the setup wizard, which we do not need to do because our firewall is already configured. And we see the actual name of our firewall device, which is really good. Okay, let's go ahead and go into our firewall to view the different reports that we can view. And there you will see a new option on the menu called management. Let's go to that tab now to see what options are listed there. So here we can enable, again, we can access the setup wizard if needed, but that's not really recommended. You want to do all that locally and not do it through the cloud itself but you can, it is an option for changing the interfaces and other basic configuration. We can also send backup configurations to Forte Cloud if needed, and we can even perform firmware upgrades if needed on our firewall. Now, in order to send backups to Forte Cloud, let's go back to our firewall, and here under the console, okay, we need to access the central management subsystem. So let's go ahead and go there now. So here we'll type in config system central management. Okay. And there let's view the current configuration under that system. Okay. And there you will see that there's nothing set up for backups. You will see something called set type for the guard. So let's enable that now by typing in the command, which is set mode, oops, mode backup. Okay, so let's view the configuration once more. And now our firewall is set up for us to send backups to FortiCloud. Now, in order to send backups to FortiCloud, you would type in the following command right from the CLI. And that would be execute backup config management station. Okay, followed by some simple note or description. Okay, now on FortiCloud, it will only display the timestamp when a backup was received. So keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and do like March config, something simple. And once we're done, we'll do enter. Okay, and that backup has completed. Let's now go back into the FortiCloud management page. Okay, and there we do see our backup listed here. And we have a couple of options. We have an option where we can download the file. We can compare it against another backup file that we have stored here. And of course, we can delete it if necessary. So again, not a lot of options that could be very useful, but over time, I see the potential of this becoming very, very robust. Again, FortiCloud is really utilized for the reporting capabilities, which is very, very useful. Okay, and that will conclude this video for learning how to set up or enable 40 Cloud and how it can be used for your environment.